introductions to our ring announcer, the magnificent Mark Biro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the grandest of them all, the Grand Casino in Tunica, Mississippi, for an evening of championship boxing on the heavyweight explosion. Under the promotion of Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with CKSN and Corona Beer La Cerveza Mas Fina. Your matchmakers are Ron Scott Stevens and Eric Butcher. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the Mississippi State Athletic Commission. The chairman in attendance is the Honorable Billy Lyons. Chief Deputy Assistant Sal Taranto and Commissioner in attendance Fred Angelis. This is your first heavyweight championship bout of the evening. It is scheduled for 12 rounds for the PABA Heavyweight Championship. Ring officials assigned by the Pan Asian Boxing Association, the President Yang Sup Shim, supervisor in attendance Igor Mazarov. Your judges at ringside are from Manila in the Philippines, Ferdinand Estrella, and from Biloxi, Mississippi, Fred Steinwinder III and C. Day Jenkins. The referee for this event from Destrahan, Louisiana, the elegant Elmo Adolf. Here now are the principals. First in the red corner to my left, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at 236 pounds. His professional record reads, 21 victories, six defeats, one draw, and 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the former Canadian heavyweight champion and challenger, Shane Canadian Thunder Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe. His opponent, in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at 231 and a half pounds, his professional record, 16 victories, two defeats, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Moscow, Russia, the PABA heavyweight champion, Oleg Moskayev. Moskayev. 12 rounds for the PABA Heavyweight Championship. Hi, gentlemen. I was giving you instructions earlier. I just want to let you know that's going to be legal, okay? All right, shake hands now. Come out boxing. All right, a very pensive Maskiev and uh, Shane Sutcliffe trying to uh, shake things out here right now and see if he can get past the earlier rounds with Maskiev where he's could be quite devastating. 11 knockouts in his 16 wins, Kevin. And uh, it's going to be real interesting to see right now. Maskiev, although it's his only a three-month layoff, just had a three-round outing so far this year in 1999. Of course, that again was the stoppage of Wooden. Well, the one thing about Maskiev, he starts early. He's very strong. Hard punch, a big right hand. That was a very good left hook. But I know one thing that Bob Jackson told me that I'm working on his jab and utilizing it very well. You know, we mentioned, of course, Sutcliffe running out of gas in the late rounds, in particular his last fight against Burbick. Uh, Maskiev has only been past 10 rounds twice in his career, a 12-round win over Nikolai Kolpin, and that was way back in 1995. And, of course, the 11th round loss where he ran out of gas against David Tour and got stopped in the 11th round when he was ahead on point. So neither right, fighter no, 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 real big Don't hit in terms of being uh, distance runners. But one thing about Maskev is, you see how big and strong he looks. Sutcliffe, you know, he's a big, strong guy, too. He left a lot of weight to go in his career. And I think, you know, when you have that kind of size, you tend to want to punch harder. Maskev actually got to Sutcliffe early in the first round here and hit him with a few good shots. It seemed like it bothered Sutcliffe a little bit, made him clinch and grab. Maskev in his last fight knocking out Wooden with a picture-perfect right-hand lead that dropped Wooden in the first round. Wooden never regained his legs, got stopped in the third after somehow surviving through the first and second. I give Maskev credit on one thing. He's showing patience here. You know, Sutcliffe is throwing pretty good shots at him once in a while here and there. He's blocking him with his arms. He's making him the Sutcliffe miss, and he's not coming back right away, which shows patience. But shows, you know, he's number five in the world by the BC. And like I said, he's one of the kids in that up in that upper echelon, a fighter, with Michael Grant, I got Gabucci and those guys. 
and he's showing here he has patience. Well, he's also showing he's got a great right hand. He's tagging Sutcliffe, who's walking in with that left low, and Maskey have taken big advantage of it. has got a beautiful right hand. Not a bad jab either. Sutcliffe trying to get some sort of a jab started, but he's not offering anything. He's letting Maskey have walked right in now, Kevin. But one thing I give Sutcliffe credit for, he's taking on the chin. So it shows that his chin is not as suspect as we thought it would be early enough. But I tell you, right now, Maskev is throwing some heavy punches, but he's being patient with it. He's not trying to open up like we've seen some early, you know, these three fights that are going to happen on the card for guys less inexperienced than him. Sutcliffe stopped twice in his career, once way back in 93 by Terrell Biggs, and of course, most recently, February of this year, in 12th round by former heavyweight champion Trevor Burbick. Maskiev, he's been stopped twice in his career, as we mentioned, by Oliver McCall and David Tua. We got about 15 seconds to go in this first round of a schedule 12 for the PAVA title. Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Kevin Kelly. Good first round for Maskiev, but uh, pretty decent beard being shown here right now by Shane Sutcliffe, who's eaten some big shots by from the Russian. We see Bob Jackson in front of him. He's had a fantastic relationship. Told us he looks at Jackson not as a father figure. He said as a father-in-law figure. Or maybe he's got eyes on his daughter. He better watch out. <laughs> Never know. Round two, we're scheduled for 12 on the explosion. Oleg Maskiev in the black Corona shorts. And in the solid black shorts that say Sutcliffe, I would say that's Shane Sutcliffe. At a Manimo, Canada. Very good first round from Maskiev, establishing both his jab and the right over the top. And Kevin, as we saw between rounds, a very lazy jab by Sutcliffe is allowing that counter right by Maskiev. Well, every time he sticks that jab out there and lays it out there, Sutcliffe is a, I mean, Maskiev is a veteran. You know, he's been around the ring. He knows to pick up and capitalize on a man's mistakes. Sutcliffe, I didn't even know, he fought Leon Spinks and beat Leon Spinks in an anonymous decision, eight round decision. So that's his key to victory, I guess. You know, he beat a, uh, a former world champion. He was 40 years old at the time, of course, Leon Spinks. But hey, he's got a victory you can say he has. That was back in October of 94. Sutcliffe had no amateur fights, turned pro at 17, came out of tough man competition up in Canada, said he's learned on the job and was sometimes thrown into some fights. Nevertheless, here he is at 23 years of age with 28 professional fights in the bank, 12 knockouts in his 21 wins. So he's got a little bit of punching power. But right now, not fighting the right fight. And I don't know if it's too early, Kevin, to point out that having run out of gas against Burbick, is he being too economical now and worried about being able to have something left in the late rounds? Well, he just got hit with an overhand right. Oh, and he's cut, Kevin. Bad cut in the left eye. Overhand right. I saw the punch come. We we'll, will go to video tape later. But right now, he's just being a little cautious. You understand? Maskev can punch. He's strong. The thing about Maskev, he's got punches that crack your wheel. And right now, he's cracking Sutcliffe's wheel. Well, I think he's cracking Sutcliffe's eye. That blood is, oh, it's spurting out right now. And it's Sutcliffe covered with blood. His cut is very bad. I tell you, I wouldn't be and surprised the doctor, if he makes it to the end of the second round, if the doctor don't stop the fight. Or if Maskev don't stop him. You saw it caused by a punch as opposed to a headbutt. Uh, I didn't see right. headbutt. Uh, overhand right caused it. Elmo Adolf stopping the the right, fight time, action on. at the stop, moment. Stop. He's going to want the doctor to take a Get look at here. this eye, and it's going to be interesting to see. I don't think anybody's and declared, a punch, okay? declared it from, and Elmo saying it's from a punch. punch. Overhand right, I saw the punch that And did if it. this fight is stopped, Kevin, because it's from a punch, it will be a TKO win for Oleg Maskiev. Doctor, doctor taking a look. The only thing I can say, okay? We're trying to Let see if it's... Let me look at it. Trying to see if the blood is flowing into the eye of Sutcliffe. I saw him pawing at it a little bit. Kevin, this is a deep cut because you can see the, the spurting coming out. Well, the safety the first. This is boxing. You don't want to see nobody okay. hurt. If the doctor stopped, I don't think anybody complains. They're going to let it go on, and I guess they'll give 
Sutcliffe's corner a chance to uh, get to work on that between rounds. And he's got a very competent corner with him, Yvonne Michel, out of Montreal. Gord Apollini, and of course, Bob Miller's here to work on the cuts, veteran cut man Miller. But he's going to have his work cut out for him, no pun intended there, as we've got 35 seconds to go here in round number two. And Maskiev really going to work on that eye, too. He knows it's caused by a punch. No fear of the fight being called to no contest, Kevin. And he's really starting to tattoo Sutcliffe, who I got to say, for a young man of 23, showing a lot of poise in a control. very bad and precarious situation right now. Well, right now, he needs a knockout to win early or this fight's going to be stopped. I think the, the cut is so deep that Doctor will stop it in between rounds. Elmo stopping the fight. He's not going to give the corner a chance, Kevin. And we've got a TKO round two as a right hand busts open the eye of Shane Sutcliffe. And it's that big right hand of Oleg Maskiev. And it's the right hand does the damage now for two fights in a row for Maskiev. Last time, Wooden. This term, time, Maskiev busting open the eye of Shane Sutcliffe. We're going to try to see if we can see the shot. Here comes that right in close. And that appeared to have been the punch, but we're trying to see if we can pick up, pick up any crimson coming from the face of Sutcliffe. Maskey of working up. Oh, that looks like that was the right hand that finally, uh, that was, that was the right hand, and you see the blood start to flow. On the eye of, Sh of Sutcliffe, another brilliant performance, though, on the part of Oleg Maskiev, improving his record to 17 and 2. That's his 12th win by way of knockout. A very disappointed Sutcliffe drops down to 21 and 7. One draw, his corner never got an opportunity to go to work on that eye. And look at that cut. Very deep, and you could tell how deep it was when the blood was spurting out of there. As the pulse and the heart people, we're going to get the official time of the stoppage from our ring announcer, Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes, 56 seconds of the second round. The referee stops the contest. The winner by tactical knockout and still PABA heavyweight champion, Oleg Maskaev. Maskaev. Well, Oleg Maskaev, as we said, improves to 17 and two, 12 wins by way of knockout as Sutcliffe's dropped down to 21 and seven. The real issue is going to be is what's next for Maskiev. People, he said yesterday to us, people are ducking him left and right. I know our Kevin Kelly's in the ring right now. He's going to try to get a hold of Maskiev and find out exactly what's in the future. Will it be more fights yeah. over here on the explosion and we're happy to see him here? Or will he be able to get the Michael Grants, Hasim Rockman's of the world, or possibly even Andrew Galata in? But Kevin will let us know and so will Oleg. Take it away, Kev. Well, here we are with Oleg Maskev. Congratulations. He looked really good. Stopped him in his fashionable style. Is anything that you would like to work on next and say to the people out there? Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm not really in my shape. I wasn't in my shape, but, you know, I'm I'm working, I'm working to put, put in my neck next a good fight. Yeah, I wasn't in shape, but, you know, uh, when I come... But look at the monitor. We're going to take a look at the punch that landed, the overhand right, the, the cut. Um, Right there, you see the punch landing, open the cut. How did you set that punch up so much? Uh, because, you know, I, I set up with my little, uh, le left jab, and then uh, I find my distance, good distance for my right hand, and automatically, bam. It seemed to me after that cut was open, you went, you attacked him, you sucked into the blood, you saw the cut, and you went right after him. Yeah, but definitely, he, he, he did good, good, good work, you know, he stopped the fight because, you know, the cut was too big. I had to yell at him because he was backing off the guy because of the blood. You know, I want to hit him again. Well, gentle, with gentle. a great victory, congratulations, back to Arnie. Okay. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Oleg, and Bob Jackson. Bob Jackson saying that uh, perhaps Oleg got a little blood shy there and uh, was backing off from Shane Sutcliffe as the blood was flowing. And uh, somewhat disappointing, I would have liked to see on a cut like that, strictly from a academic point of view, whether Bob Miller would have been able to uh, stop the flow of blood. But nevertheless, a good stoppage by referee Elmo Adolf and uh, goes into the books as TKO2 for Oleg Maskiev. 
as he improves to 17 and 2. Be interesting to see what's next for him. He was actually scheduled to fight Galata, and for some reason, Galata pulled out of that fight, and the fight is not happening. Some good heavyweight matchups coming up in the future. Perhaps the winner of Michael Grant and Savarese would be an interesting fight to see Maskiev get into. Uh, the heavyweight uh, championship picture, of course, stalled at the top, waiting for the rematch of Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. Now it's time on Heavyweight Explosion. Time out for trivia in particular, as we have our heavyweight trivia question of the night.